Thank you so much, Robert. I appreciate it. First of all, thank you so much for being here. Uh, one of the things that, as I've reviewed hundreds of courses, as we do in, in, in City, and look at a lot of this, the instruction that's been given to students kind of across campus, sometimes uh, um, we wonder a little bit how much instructors are concerned about the student experience and making their content usable. And so you had other good uh, options today that you could have gone to different sessions. I'm, I'm th thank you for being here. Uh, some of you that have been doing Canvas for a while, there'll be some stuff that you might be familiar with, but I guarantee there will be at least something new um, for every single person here today. So um, as we go throughout, we'll, feel free to raise your hand at any point to, to ask any questions you might have, and then we'll address them there and hopefully leave a couple of minutes at the end as well. So um, to get started, as Robert mentioned, my role is specifically around accessibility for students with disabilities. We're not going to talk a lot about that specifically today. Uh, one of the things that, um, again, as we review a lot of courses, it's hard to make a course accessible if it isn't first just usable for everybody. And, and the number of kind of usability problems and challenges that we have in a lot of our courses, um, th there's plenty of those. Um, but by doing this usability work, you're also making your content more accessible for all students as well. So, so they, they go hand in hand generally. The, uh, if nothing else, if you have questions about anything that you don't want to bring up in here, I would love to visit with any or all of you. Um, I, I'm always happy to talk more about accessibility than probably you are to listen, but, so, so, but, I'll, but I'll, 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 I'll manage myself. But please reach out with any questions. If you're nervous or, 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 or any of the things that we talk about today, absolutely would love to sit down and just look at your specific course, your course materials, and what we can do with them. There's a, a whole tremendous team in city as well that's, that's anxious and ready to help. There is a website there that a lot of the resources that we'll mention today, you can find them there. So to start out talking about usability a little bit, we're just kind of, it's a measure of looking at how easy are your online course materials for students to use. There's a lot of different definitions out there. Sometimes they talk about uh, satisfaction or effectiveness or efficiency. But when you, you put all this time and effort in, into producing great content, is it getting to students in a way that is helpful and usable to them? You know, what can we do to minimize the amount of work for students just to find or access or get to your content um, so they can start learning it? Sometimes we, students get caught up in just trying to find the right assignment or navigate to the right page before they even can start learning what, what you want them to learn in your classes. And we're going to start at the very beginning. Um, you might say with our course front page. One thing I'll mention too, if any of you, if you have your laptop with you, we'll go through a couple of things today that you can just open up and just click, click, do in your course right along with me. But if not, uh, take notes and we can follow up later. The first thing with the, your course is make sure you have a course front page. And again, if you have questions about that, there's a lot of courses that just may not for whatever reason. But, uh, or sometimes you may have a syllabus as a front page or modules as a front page. We really would recommend that you start with a nice, um, some type of welcoming experience. I'm going to show a couple of examples today of, of nicely designed courses that, um, now this one specifically, if you want to make your course look beautiful like this, uh, there's a tremendous sessioning happening later today um, by Kenneth Larson right here in the front at 2.45 called uh, sca uh, Scaffolding Your Course. What is the title of it? Building out a Canvas course quickly. <laughs> yeah, building your Canvas course shell. Uh, Kenneth and, and a team with him, that they've built out some really incredible tools. It's called Design Tools or um, Design Plus. That, that there's a little rocket ship whenever you click on it, edit a page in uh, Canvas. You click on that and you can literally build a home page like this in minutes. Uh, and, and Kenneth will go over how to do that. So we won't touch that part of it here, but that's a session I would definitely keep an eye on if you're interested in, in just the look and feel of some of this. But some of the things that might be on a, a, a home page to start, for example, just a link to your syllabus, for example, maybe in about this course. Uh, one of the nice tools built into design tools that, that we recommend you use is if you're using modules week one, week two, it'll add all your modules right there on the front page of your course. And then depending on what week you're on in the semester, right below that, it'll show you the content for that week right there on the front page. Hey, anybody here using this already? A few hands come up. If you're not, know that it's there, super easy to set up, 
really helpful. Students just log in, go right to the front page. Everything they need to do and see is right there. Um, it's consistent. It, it really just makes it easy for students to get to where they need to go. And this isn't, all home pages don't need to look the same, of course, but just consider what can I do to make my first step into the online classroom a welcoming experience for my students and help them get to the content they need to know. Maybe labs are an important part of your course or tutoring resources are available. Make that stuff available right from the get-go so students can get to where they want to go as quickly as possible. So getting a good home page. The next one I want to talk is, is about is helpful links. Uh, as human beings, when we visit a web page, there's a couple of ways we look for information. One is headings on a page, the other one is links. We kind of look to say, where do I want to go next? And often we see uh, links in Canvas that look like, click here, read more, or more information. Now as you scan a page and just see click here, or more information, it's not very helpful, right? You just don't know, click here for what, or more information about what. And so as you create your links in Canvas, on Canvas pages or wherever it might be, just take a quick minute to make those links a little bit more descriptive. Again, this is one of those, it's going to be really helpful to every single student in your classroom. And it's also an accessibility um, issue, especially for students who use some types of assistive technology. But it really doesn't take long and it's going to help your students kind of find and get to the content they need a little bit better. There's a term out there called information scent. And this is like students can kind of sniff out good information without having to look at the context of where the link is. Just make your links a little bit um, more descriptive of where they're going to and so people know what they're doing, where they're going when they click on that link. Another one uh, is, is a start here page. And this is uh, one we're working through some ideas on a little bit still as a group. But outside of your home page, which is just links, some type of first day of class experience, you might call it, or orientation to your course. However many people there are in this room, there are that many plus one different ways that you've organized your courses probably. And one thing we ask students to do each semester, they come in and they have to figure that out. How does this teacher manage their course? Do they use modules or not? Do they use assignments? Do they use quizzes? And that can be a little bit disorienting for students to figure out how your course is organized. So if you can do some kind of a start here experience, maybe link to that from your home page or on your syllabus. Um, and you, can, you can put really whatever you want in there. But, but one way, I mean, one thing would be useful often is how, how I use Canvas. What you need to know about Canvas in this course. Just think about, again, what would be helpful for students? If I could sit down with each student and tell them how to get around my course, what would I tell them? Creating that kind of a start here page can be really helpful. Here's another example of one that somebody did. Um, not exactly a start here page, sorry, sorry. excuse me. Could you go back? To you bet. To, to see how to get to the start here on my homepage. Oh good. So if you want to create a start here page, if you're using design tools that comes again this afternoon, a lot of the templates have a built-in link to a start here page. But if you don't have one, if you just click on pages in Canvas, let me just jump out real quick and show you. N no, and many courses don't have one. Good question. So um, you can decide what page you want to be your front page. Um, so, so two quick things. So if, I, if there's not a start page already in my course, I would come into Canvas and click on Pages, and then click on Page right there. Here's that design tools I mentioned up there that Kenneth will talk about later. But then I would just create a new Start Here page. Can you not make that into an assignment as well? Yeah, absolutely, and that would, might be a great way to do it. Create an actual assignment so that you know students have looked at your Start Here page. I mean, what will force my students 10 days from now to go to that Start Here page? Nothing will force them necessarily. If you make it as an assignment, that would be a good way to force them as much as you can force students to do anything. Um, so you could create it as an assignment. Oh yes, yeah. so good. So let me show you that in just one second. One other thing I'll just mention really quickly. One of the things we found about students is that many students, the way they navigate your course is by going to their course calendar and clicking on whatever is due next, right? And they might often skip over all of your fantastic content and jump right to assignments. 
One thing you can do that Canvas allows um, now is there's a little button here below every page that you can click Add to Student to Do. And so I can make a content page, for example, um, essentially due on a certain date, and then that will show up on the student's course calendars for them to, to see your content. Let me get to your question, though. If you want a page to be, so sorry, if I, um, um, I won't add content here just now, but if I want a page to be my front page, um, first I need to publish it. We always want to make sure we do that. Then I just click on these three dots right here and click Use as Front Page. And now when I click on Home, I'll come right there to that page. So again, you go to Pages, and then whatever page you want to be your front page, just click right here and then click Use as Front Page. And when I make that choice, they're not going to go to my home page automatically when they open up this from their dashboard. They're going to go to the front page. Automatically. Yes, they'll go, to, they'll go to whatever page you've designated to be your front page. And, and feel free to follow up later if we, if we want to look at setting that up in your course. Okay, let's jump ahead a little bit. Another fantastic one that used to be primarily an accessibility issue. Captions were provided for students who were deaf or hard of hearing who needed captions to access the content. And it used to be that captions were fairly expensive. Any more though, captions have come significantly down in price and there's a tremendous value from a number of different contexts that students are asking for captions. Uh, we might see in noisy environments. Some of you might be watching Game of Thrones right now with captions on as, for, uh, as far as I know, right? But if you're on the bus or maybe walking across campus, um, Eng sec uh, English as a second language learners. How many in here maybe just by curiosity turn on captions at least sometimes when you're watching video? Right, and so you can see captions are one of these things. They're just valuable in a lot of contexts. Um, obviously students can turn them on or not. Some students learn better by both seeing, hearing um, the content that you're presenting. There's a new way that we can show captions in videos right now that's called an interactive transcript player. And this is only available if you work with City right now. Um, it'll be available more generally um, for spring semester, but it actually shows your transcript. Um, you could do classroom karaoke if you want to. It highlights the words as it reads through, but students can also search for a specific word in your lecture, click right there on atmosphere, for example, and then it would jump right to that part of the video. So a lot of value to captions, and it's something that's generally available for most of our videos in Canvas. There's, there's exceptions there, um, especially if it's a one-time use or a lecture that might not be used by that many people, but if you have videos that you use semester over semester, just send a quick email to captions at usu.edu, and we can look at that and talk about doing captions for the videos in your course. And this can be for videos that are, are within Canvas or YouTube videos, or whatever source they might be from. We're, we're happy to help you get videos captioned. And again, students just more and more are asking for this regardless of, of any need around um, being deaf or, or hard of hearing. It's also essential for those audiences, of course, but, but we're seeing a lot of value doing that just in general. This next one to talk about real quick, um, modules and Canvas pages. Modules is a way to organize your content in Canvas, and it's a very great way to kind of scaffold or structure your course and so that students can move through your content in an in a, um, ordered way. Often what we see um, in courses is, is something like this, and they're using modules, which is fantastic, but just linking directly to files um, like that, where students have to do quite a bit of work to figure out, now these files aren't horrible, I guess, you can kind of determine what it might be about or a YouTube video. And so like, if you're gonna do this, make sure you're naming your files in a friendly way. But, but often even a better way would be to take content like this. For example, here's two links to a PDF file and then a YouTube video. If you take just a minute and just create a Canvas page, and we showed how to do that just a minute ago, click on Pages and then New Page, and then you can link to those articles with a little bit friendlier titles or maybe give an introduction if you would like to. Put that YouTube video right in there. And then you would link to this page in your modules instead of to the files directly. 
Um, and, they, and if you're using modules overall, that's, that's fantastic, but just a couple of extra steps to put that content to a friendlier experience, and then you can put it into a nice, um, much more easy to read, and students can kind of figure out what they're at, where they're at, and where they're going. So that would be just a recommendation on how to use modules and Canvas pages in your course content. Some puzzles, everybody okay with that? Any question, question please? Well, instead of, so instead of linking directly to files, um, you would create a, a series of pages potentially. One page might be readings. Now this doesn't say readings right there. I, I, that's a good catch, thank you. But I would have a series of pages and or quizzes that I would link to directly for modules instead of linking directly to files. So I just put a page that would be under that module with all mm -hmm. that stuff built in already. Right into the page? Yeah. Perfect, yep, that's awesome. That's a great way to do it. And if you, again, any of these items that we're talking about, um, if you have questions, let's follow up afterwards. We can look at your specific course content. This next one is one that everybody should know about. And again, if you've got your laptop open, go into a course and do it right now. Because there are a lot of courses with a lot of broken links. If you go into your Canvas, um, any Canvas course, click on Settings, then over here on the right, click on that link at the bottom that's called Validate Links in Content. Click on that and you'll probably be surprised. This particular course had 49 broken links. Sometimes we come across courses that have hundreds of broken links in them. Um, and it may be that it's pointing to content from another course that your students can't access or, or just links on the internet that are no longer functioning. But take a quick minute to do that each semester before you start your course. Uh, and then if whatever broken links you can just, it'll tell you what page it's on right here, course syllabus for example. Then I could go through and see. Um, I could go through and see what those links are and update them if I need to to do so. It really is a big deal. Like I'm sometimes surprised at how many courses. And you would think students would complain if the broken links if the links are broken, but I think they're like, "Hooray! I don't have to care about that." Is more so the attitude generally. Please. I just have a question. Like, if the link is linking to like my media. Mm -hmm. to a different course for yeah. Kaltura videos? Yes, yes there should be. Um, let's follow up if you would though, that's okay. And we can look at that specifically, thank you. But yeah, check out, make sure you check out the course link validator, it's a big deal. This next one I'm just gonna call super cool feature. This has been around for a little bit, I'm just really excited about it. This is something that's already in all of your courses. You've probably even noticed it, but maybe you haven't been aware of what it does. It, it, it works on every single file. So anytime you link to a file in Canvas, any kind of file, PDF, Word document, Excel document, there's gonna be that little arrow off to the side, right? Have you maybe seen that? Um, if not, go in, or you can look in your files area if you have it. If anybody, this is available to students, if any student clicks on that, there's a couple of options. They can preview the file, download the file, or number three, alternative formats. Click on alternative formats. This is a tool called Ally that we've purchased, but students can download any of your content in any of these formats. So for example, your PDF readings, a student can click on that and download an audio file to listen to that 20 page academic paper on the go, um, on their way to work or out for a run, whatever it might be. Students are already using this, uh, a lot of them. We'll be doing a little bit more marketing to kind of help them be aware of it. But try it out yourself. Uh, it does a pretty remarkable job. Um, if it doesn't um, do as good of a job as you would like, then reach out to us. It may be that your content's just not very accessible and we can improve it to then uh, provide better solutions to your students. You can also download it as an EPUB, for example, but this works for, again, any content that'll convert it to these formats. Please, question. Including PowerPoints? Including PowerPoints. Now, uh, the value of PowerPoint and audio it depends on, I guess, your PowerPoints potentially, but it can convert PowerPoints to um, HTML potentially, that might be valuable, or a PDF document. Electronic Braille, right, and that's a, if you have a blind student in your course, you will be notified by the Disability Resource Center and we'll step in to provide any specific help you might need. Um, that's kind of a, a, an edge case a little bit of, of students that use electronic Braille. Um, but it is available in there um, just in case. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, the next one I want to talk about is navigation. This is kind of a big one. Again, by default, Canvas sets up your course with a whole bunch of things on the left-hand side, right? The, the navigation, and a lot of those you aren't using. And so it's really easy to click on settings. Let me just jump out real quick and show this because it's, it's easy enough to do. You just click on settings in your course, and we're going to need this for a couple of other things, but then click on navigation. And there's a bunch of tools down here that are available for you to use. But just everything up here that you don't use in your course, just get it out of there. Because students often have 20 links to, to look through on the left-hand side when all they want to look for is grades. So if you're just using grades, quizzes, discussions, and assignments, just have those five nav navigation items in the, in the left-hand side and get rid of everything else. And that's going to really simplify uh, just your course experience for all of your students. It only takes a couple of minutes come in here, drag out everything you don't want anymore, and once you've dragged it out, just come down to the bottom and click Save, and then that won't show up here in the left-hand menu anymore. Conferences and collaborations and chat often show up, but not very many faculty use those. Just again, or maybe a previous instructor you've used it from, take just a minute to get rid of all that content that you're not using. Makes a big difference um, to have to look through five or six menu items instead of 10 or 15 menu items as you go through your course materials. Um, related to that, I want to talk about the files area specifically in your course. We did an audit a little bit ago, and over 50% of the files across all of our Canvas courses are not being used. So this is often going to be files from previous semesters, or maybe duplicate files, or whatever it might be. And there's not, there hasn't really been a good way to get rid of or identify those files in Canvas either. So the first thing I would recommend is probably just hide the files area from your students. Um, in one case, we found the, the test answers were in the files area, hidden kind of somewhere. The teacher didn't know, so maybe the students didn't know they were there either. But, but often, I mean, there's better ways to get the students the files they need, again, by linking them in pages often. Um, and so we generally would recommend just hide that files area, that files menu item. But then we also have a, a new tool available that I want to show real quick called Tidy Up. Has anybody in here tried out Tidy Up? It's fairly new, just one or two hands. So again, Tidy Up is available in all of your courses from the navigation. You just need to find it and drag it into your course navigation. It's one that's only available to you. Other students don't see that. Then I'll click on Tidy Up right here in the menu. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Scan Course. Now I've got one. It'll take just a minute to scan your course, depending on how much material you have in your course. But then it brings up a list like this. And it'll give you a list of all the files that aren't being used in your course anymore. And so this might have been you've double imported material into a course or syllabi from five years ago, whatever it is. But I can come right here, and if I want to preview it, I can real quick. Oh, yeah, I don't need that. I just click right there on um, that Select All, then I click Delete, and zap. All of those unused files are gone from my course forever. I never have to see them again. They are still available in previous courses, but it just makes your, your files area a lot cleaner to, to navigate. Um, the other nice feature here, you can look at the files that are in use in your course. If you're just curious, and you can come over here and see, oh, I'm using this image on this page, um, or you can sort by when it was used last. Once you've deleted a bunch of files, you'll probably have some empty folders that you can delete. Then the last tab here in Tidy Up just gives you a hundred, like a, kind of a 360 degree of all your course content. Um, has anybody here started a new semester and got a complaint from a student that something wasn't published? That's fairly common, happens. Um, this is a quick way just to zip through there and make sure everything's published. Um, or if, you, if you're putting content in modules, it'll tell you if something's in modules or not. Just a, just a nice little tool there. You can also click right here and just um, either delete a bunch of pages from one place or even rename pages right from here. It's just a quick way to get through all your content. Take a look at Tidy Up. Get rid of all that old content you don't need anymore. Okay, this next one I want to talk about, PDF files. And again, as we look across all of our Canvas courses, PDF files are by far the most common type of way that we deliver content to students. 
uh, more than Word or PowerPoint or anything else, PDF files. And you probably, if you were a student in the last, since 1990, PDFs were probably part of your academic experience. And I want to share some concerns about PDF today and give you some solutions or ways forward potentially around PDF. So first of all, just some of the concerns a little bit. And, and, and this is maybe a little bit strong, that we're not going to ban PDF from all courses, but there's often cases where we're using PDFs unnecessarily and where we don't need to, and making things a little bit harder for students. The first scenario is this kind of a thing. These are all from, from real Utah State courses. If it's any of yours, I apologize. And we'll help you fix it. Uh, but, but these kind of PDFs, right, that are scanned or copied in, um, you know, you can get your NECA workout, I guess, if you go either direction sometimes. There's a lot of this that should make it a little bit hard to read for students. Um, or here's one that was all the way upside down. And we go through these Canvas courses sometimes that are beautifully designed, have great course experience, and then they're just cluttered up with these PDF files that are just not as usable um, or easy for students to access. Even if you have a nice, clean PDF file like this, Students that open Canvas on their mobile phones, this is the experience they get with that PDF, right? Really difficult for students to read that. Or you can zoom in and do that kind of a thing where it scroll back and forth and back and forth. Students just aren't gonna, gonna read that content on their mobile devices. But we have a solution now. now. We're really excited about that. A couple of solutions. The first one we would generally recommend it's just, just, especially if you start in PowerPoint or Word, just keep it in that format. Uh, you know, sometimes instructors will create PDF versions of PowerPoints um, or, uh, or of Word documents or whatever. Every student on campus has access to open any of these tools um, natively in PowerPoint. And, and, and if you can just do that, then students can print out two slides per page, six slides per page, whatever they want to do, instead of the three slides per page with notes that you're providing for them. Generally, just keep files in their native format wherever possible. It's a lot easier to make a Word or a PowerPoint document um, accessible, and they're going to be more responsive on a mobile device than a PDF file. However, you probably have a lot of PDF content that you didn't create in the first place. And I want to talk about a kind of a new and exciting solution to that. And again, this is available in Canvas. I'm just going to jump out and demo it real quick. If you go into any of your courses um, and hit into the file section, um, and then I come over here to these three dots, one of the formats that Ally provides, as you can see, is HTML, which is just a web page, basically. And, and so a feature we've made, like this is a PDF. I'll just open it so you can see it. It's a fairly simple PDF. But that's a PDF file. There's, if you click on these three right dots, then come down here to convert to Canvas page. And it goes and does a little bit of thinking. And then zap just like that. I'll open it in a new tab. It's converted that PDF file to, a, to Canvas content um, that you as an instructor can then edit if you would like. Um, it may not be perfect, depending on the quality of the PDF file, but it does a pretty good job. You can see it brings in the lists, the table, whatever it might be. Converting content from PDF files to a Canvas file, there's just a lot of advantages there. I mean, it's certainly going to be more accessible, um, mobile friendly. If you use the an Canvas analytics to track students and what they're doing in your course, you can now see how much their time they're spending on your content. Um, just, it's something we're really excited about. There haven't been good options in the past other than PDF. And hopefully this starts to open the door to move away from that, at least in some cases or for some content. And if your content's not working with this tool very well, we also have some resources and some student workers that this is what they do a lot of the day um, that can work on making your content more accessible. We also have a link to the original file there at the top in case that's needed. There were a couple of questions. Let's start here. It does, yeah. And then depending on the need, if it's just a, a instructions for an assignment, you may not need the PDF and you can just delete that. But if it's an academic article, maybe you want to keep the original as well with the page numbers, it'll just link to that PDF file right at the top there. Yeah, especially some graduate students really like it. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure, yep, and we want to provide that option where, where it's needed. Question here? Microsoft OneNote should be fairly accessible. 
um, in general. As far as you can just copy it from OneNote and paste it into a Canvas page as well. I'm not as familiar with the OneNote experience. Um, is it, it's fairly embedded in Canvas, I believe. I don't know for sure. We could look and see. I, that's something we could just have to look at a little bit. But if not, that content you could just be able to copy and then paste it right into a Canvas page. And it should come in pretty clean. This, this convert to page doesn't work for OneNote, though. Was there another question? Please. Let's say you have, you have information in an InDesign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you certainly can put it into a PDF format. Uh, it's a little bit of, and, and that's a concern that's brought up sometimes about putting things in PDF. It's fairly easy. There's a lot of tools online for students to extract content out of from one format on, into almost anything. There are some things you can do to lock down a PDF, for example. If you put it into a web, web page, if we were to convert that to a web page format, some students might know how to do that, others not. Um, Maybe we could just look at a use case. I'd love to follow up with you on that to kind of look at. But that may be a valid concern for some types of content. Please. How does the convert to page do with um, like multi-column images? Does a pretty good job with columns. It doesn't work with images right now. Um, if, if you go here and just download the HTML using Ally, it'll work with images. We don't have images in the conversion process. So if you have a lot of images and content, reach out to us and we can help with that part of it. Thank you so much. And please, please follow up with other questions on that. I want to just hit a couple of other quick things as we wrap up here today. But that, no, that's there and it's available for to try out. Give it a whirl. Let us know if you have any feedback. Here's a couple of examples of, of what that looks like in content. Again, a PDF on the left, a nice clean canvas page on the right. There's another one, um, not an atypical PDF necessarily. Here's what it looks like on a mobile device. Much going to be a much better experience for your students. Um, lastly, just to cover a couple of accessibility things as we address a lot of these usability issues, thank you, um, that, that there are these little um, gauges that you see in your content. You've noticed those, some of you maybe? Um, don't be afraid of those. Those are giving you feedback on how accessible your content is or isn't. Um, and some of them you can click on, you might be a little bit confused. On others though, if I were to click on this one for an image, for example, it would just prompt me to say, if you just need to add a description to this image to make it more accessible, you'll do that and it'll go from zero to 100% just like that. There's a brand new feature just this week, um, let me just skip through there, that's called an accessibility report that again is available in your navigation that you can drag up into your course. And it'll give you an overall course accessibility report that'll give you, tell you all the content you have and what challenges you have. The, the one area you could look at, content with easiest issues to fix. These are things you could probably do on your own, um, but there may be other things where, again, we can jump in and help. And if that's the case, I'll show my contact information again in just a second. But just in summary, if any of this is overwhelming at all, please just remember that it's a journey. And if you can even just do one or two of these things this fall semester to make your course a little bit more usable for your students, it can really have a tremendous impact on making their lives and learning experiences just a little bit easier. Um, would love to follow up with any of you. I know I covered a lot of stuff fast. To look at any of these things, how they apply to your exact course, or any of the team in City are there ready and willing to help as well. Um, thank you so much. Appreciate your time today.